Greetings and welcome to the Marginally Geeky Show. Uh, I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Tonight I'm joined by Sean, Chris, and Ray. How is everyone? Hello. Great. Just peachy. <laughs> <laughs> How was everyone's uh, uh, holidays? Ah, oh, quick and long at the same time. Busy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty busy. Yeah. Yeah. And people were uh, sick during the holidays too. So. Oh no, that's not good. Him. And Quinn. Thanks, Rebecca. She didn't give it to you. Cole. <laughs> <laughs> so, did anyone get any reading done? I'll be honest. I know we usually talk about that at the end of the show. What else we've been reading? Um, yeah, <laughs> not you have. I did oh, not yeah. get any reading done. So. Yeah, I got back in the habit of reading before bed. So, oh, we, nice. I'm, yeah, I got out of it for a while, but I finished uh, one of my mom porn books, and then I. I'm almost done. I'm like two chapters away from finishing this one book um, called The Skin Map. Okay. I, it was a book Ray bought years ago. And so I'm on this thing where I don't want to buy any more new books until I've read like everything in the house. Yeah, you said that. <laughs> so I'm actually going to do it, though. I've said no. that a lot. I'm actually going to do it <laughs> before I buy more new books. So, yeah, it's by Stephen Lawhead. Or something like that. Anyway, he's a British writer, and it's it's really interesting. It's the se- first of a series, so I'm hoping the rest of the series is out. There's like three more, I think. So, um, oh, look at dark. Ooh, mood lighting. Is that too dark? <laughs> <laughs> For the audio listeners, it's uh, not quite as bright. It's still okay, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, but I've been reading a lot, so I'm almost on that one, and then I think I'm gonna read. Um, Oh, what else do we have that I think I'm going to read? Oh, The Cursed Child. I haven't read that yet, so I'm going to read I'm that. shocked about. You told me I couldn't read it until I had read all of the Harry Potter books. That's so true. <laughs> that wasn't allowed to. Oh, well. Oh, you got bougie on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and start with our episode. Um, We purposely kind of put off, uh, we, we had a pretty decent-sized break, and we wanted to go ahead and knock out Two books at once. The reason is we've got several things going on here. Number one, uh, we read uh, the first book in the Bobaverse uh, series, uh, um, We Are Legion, We Are Bob, quite a while ago. And if you've read the book, you know it just immediately flows into the second and third book. Uh, and we've been meaning to get around to doing those books. And we we talked about it even when we reviewed the first book that when we do eventually review these books, we're going to have to do them together. It's going to have to be – you know, one one show, we're going to have to do both books because you really can't pull them apart. Um, and next week, we are going to actually get to talk with the author. So uh, we're all very excited about that. So excited. Den- Dennis E. Taylor will be on the show so we can talk with him. And uh, so we're like, well, maybe we really should get our review of the second, third book done. So uh, that's what we're doing tonight. Mm-hmm. Um so, like I said, we are reviewing uh, books two and three in the Bobaverse series um, for We Are Many and All of These Worlds. Um, as we speak, uh, Mr. Taylor is currently sending off uh, and has got the the wheels going for the publication of the next book in the the universe. It, I don't know. It's not necessarily a direct sequel, but it is the Search for Bender. That's the um, uh, uh, the, the working title right now. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Which is broken into two pieces. Heaven's River or something like that. Two yeah. part. Yeah. So oh. um which I'm excited for that because mm-hmm. anything more we can get in the Baba Verse universe, I'm I'm happy about. So yep. um and like I just I discussed this uh with the group before the show, uh we are not going to go book by book because they are the books really are – it's like it, – it is a big story that he broke into three pieces, masterfully done. Mm-hmm. Uh, where the breaks are, I completely and totally agree with. Um, but the, the stories do flow together. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to uh, – we're going to look at the different characters. Um, and uh, – <laughs> do can't do all of them. Oh, like, no. We're not going to do all of them. There, there are definitely some standouts. <laughs> yes. Um so if you have not, first off, if you haven't read the first Bob of Verse book, there's no reason for you to be here right now. So go, go ahead and go on to your next podcast and come, come back, back and check later. this. Yes. Uh, come back after you've read the two. Um, 
But uh, just to just to kind of qu- kind of a quick recap. Uh, so uh, Robert Johansson is a uh, programmer. He uh, signs up with this uh, company to have his head frozen if he dies, and then immediately gets hit by a car in Las Vegas, uh, and wakes up over a hundred years in the future where he is a uh, replicant. Basically, he's a uh, an artificial intel- intelligence. Um, the world is coming to an end. There's been a Basically, uh, nuclear winter is starting to fall, and they shoot him and some other replicants out into the universe, and he begins to replicate himself as part of what his original job was supposed to be. Um, and each one of these repli- each one of these um, uh, clones of himself, they're not really clones, uh, take on different personalities, and they also take on. Uh, kind of different aspects of life. So we've got one. Um, he originally started with the name Riker. He changed. He was, now goes by Will. Uh, goes back to Earth to see if there's anyone left on Earth, and then has to deal with the fallout of that. Um, Bill ends up staying in the first uh, place that they ended up, and basically is kind of like the clearinghouse for all technology and information for every, all of the different Bobs. Uh, and then we've got several other ones that have been cloned off and, and done other missions. So with that, bi- with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and start with Riker, AKA will. Um, so some of his clones that were noteworthy are Homer, uh, Howard and Marcus. Um, his job, he went back to earth to see, he went back to earth with Homer to see if there was anyone left. And when they got there, they find out that, uh, the, well, it used to be the, um, Brazilian government ship uh, has a couple of Madeira. Uh, they're they're replicant, uh, basically trying to destroy the rest of the Earth. They end up fighting them off, and has ended up basic. He is in charge of getting what's left of humanity off of Earth, and it's um, fifteen million. Mm-hmm. Fifteen yep. million. Fifteen yep. million people. Are, le- are all that's left on Earth. And as they keep putting it, uh, they keep running into bottlenecks, trying to make enough ships, and it's... Uh, it's either 1,500 it, trips or 1,500 ships. ships. Yes, and of course they don't have anywhere near enough materials to make 1,500 uh, ships, so they're making lots and lots of trips. Uh, and, and then and while he's dealing with this, he's having to deal with um, what's left of the government's, trying to get these people organized, trying to get these people uh, fed. Uh, Cause like I said, n- nuclear winter is falling. And so um, one of the reasons I really like these books is I like resource management. I-, I just do. And like part of my resource management is keeping my 3d printers going and making sure stuff's print. So I can, I can sympathize a lot with these characters because that is one of the things they have to talk about is making printers and printing, making new things and everything. So, um, what were your thought? What was your thoughts on uh, Will? I really liked Will's story and story arc through all three books in the way that um, I can sympathize with him in the way of like, all right, somebody's got to do the shitty job about going back. I'm going to go back. I got stuck with a Yahoo who's driving me nuts but whatever like i'll deal with him later um i love homer by the way but anyway, i do that's, too that's, that's yeah. a side note uh and then you know he's and he, as he's dealing with all these things i i see his side of things in the way of you know what you guys are being stupid i love how he deals with the the un right where where he he's like i can leave anytime it, yes <laughs> I have no part in this. So I didn't <laughs> I didn't start a war. I didn't do any of that shit. You guys were part of that. How about you guys just back off and let me do my thing and save your asses cuz you're too dumb to do it. Like and I feel like that uh, <laughs> a lot with humanity where it's like you guys work. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. Uh <laughs> I feel like that a lot uh, where it's like, you know what? You guys are making some really stupid decisions right now. How about we just all get along? Can you can you just do that for a bit, please? Because, damn it, you're pissing me off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, he, I, he, I, he starts off as a real like, – he starts off very um, starched is the best word I, yes. I have for it. He's very formal. He's very – 
you know, buy the book. We're going to do things this way or whatever. But and then he so, meets his grandnephew. <laughs> And <laughs> and when he yes, and then we get we, we have Homer. So you know they talk about Homer in the first book, and Homer starts off as being a total goofball, and it even says he would have left him if he even had the slightest inclination. But what's funny is is you get those interactions between him and Homer, and you know he's you know kind of like well Homer listen it's not a joke, and then Homer just goes so straight laced, and he's just like well they're scared they they don't know what yeah. to do. You've got to give them something to do, and it's like dropping hard knowledge on him and he yep. he comes to understand that and he keeps saying that as as things go by he's like yep. well my opinion of homer's taking another tick up and yep. so how homer's right on top of all the farms how he um i'm sure we'll talk about it anyway but how we'll he, go ahead and talk let's go ahead and talk about it so homer yeah. one of the problems that is is food there's not enough food and they're trying to figure out the best way to do this and homer comes up with this idea of the farming donut because they can't make sp- they can't make space stations for people to live on. It would be too difficult. But growing crops on them makes total sense. And Homer's the only one that figured that out. Well, and then he also, I love how he underestimated how much they were making on purpose. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I would do. I'd be like, yeah, I think it's only making like 25. I'm making 45. But that's yes. true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I miscalculated. Oh, it we got more yeah. than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> One of the other things about uh, uh, Will is uh, he becomes the de facto voice for the Bobs, talking to what little of their actual ancestors are still alive. Um, so in 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 dealing with he ends up meet, um, meeting um, what was her name uh, Julia Julia's yeah. uh, family, yeah. and it's his like great 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 niece or something like that. And uh, so he ends up communicating with them and her son, who is uh, uh, Justin. He Justin, starts off yeah. as a little boy. Space and he's a, Cadet Justin. Space mm. Cadet Justin. And uh, uh, anytime he talks to the family, like all the other Bobs have decided that they're not going to communicate with him. He's going to be their voice. And, and I they love just, that decision. Yes. And they just, you know, kind of fall in with it or whatever. So... As time goes by, we run into some different situations. Number one, things just keep getting worse and worse on Earth, and we they start having issues with a um, a radicalized group called Vehement that is basically telling humans, "Hey, listen, y'all had your chance. Time for us to die." Um, and they keep running into problems with it, and they start killing animals. They start eventually start killing people, and it keeps getting worse and worse. Uh, and then we have a betrayal. Oh, they get to the farms. Yes. Yeah. And so we have a betrayal. Um, so Homer, we end up finding out that Homer was hacked. And when he comes out of it, he's not the same. Oh, he's, it broke my yes. heart. That one yeah. broke my heart. That was heartbreaking. That was. Uh, yeah. So before we get into the house, that, like, that was devastating. Very sad. Uh, one one aspect that I love that they brought back was the sandbox Bob. I love sandbox Bob. Yes. And he, I could just see him, you know, twirling in his little chair, and then, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> like it's just, I love that. Um, but yeah, as for as for Homer, that broke my heart, and that's that was hard to listen to mm-hmm. more than once. Like we've listened to the book a few times now, and every time, yeah, that hits me right in the feels. Like it's. Yeah. Ugh. I think with the. Um... With all the things that Will goes through, all the things that Riker goes through, out of all the Bobs, he seems to retain the most humanity. Like, he's still, he's the one with the family. He's the one dealing with Homer, and he's dealing with the rest of the humans and all that. And that's what I found with all the other Bobs. They Even the original Bob were, were, were they had their quirks that really stood out where will on the other hand he didn't seem quirky he seemed human the whole time there's only one other one that i'll i'll say and that's howard yeah so Although i would howard, say those two for different reasons yes yeah, yeah totally. for different reasons. he doesn't feel human he feels like he's an ant and humans are ephemeral that's yeah. the only but yeah i, I would agree with you he that, himself doesn't identify as human yeah yeah and but I would agree. But he with does you that, have the family stuff to deal with. Yep. And then but but Will and especially when mm-hmm. Will goes and meets with Justin later, yeah. And, and in the android body, you know that that was a cool scene as well. And that was him kind of letting go of that part 
of of his yeah. life and understanding that maybe the other guys have it right and I can't get too attached and that kind of stuff, which is a little sad, mm-hmm. right? So well, really, he suffered the most loss of all the Bob. Oh, yeah. oh, he did. Yes, yeah, for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he know. he is okay. There's a lot of big topic stuff that I want to talk about that this book brings up, which by the way is, is one of the reasons why this book is so, this book series is so fantastic. Mm-hmm. But, um, so yes, he, he meets with Julia and he watches her grow older. And one of the things that talks about in the book is not only is, are they essentially immortal? They're not, I mean, they they are, but they aren't. Um, it's, it's the fact that not only are they immortal, but they're a computer. So they have pers- perfect memory. Mm-hmm. And so he brings up the fact he's like, you know, you know, whereas you remember your, you're talking to Justin, he's like, you know, where the, whereas you might remember your mother's death and it's not a vague thing, but it's something you remember, you know, from whatever I, ha- I can pull up that memory completely crystal clear. Yeah. So, uh, okay. and that weighs on him. And um, he, even, he even recognizes the wrinkles in people. Yes, right? he no. sees wrinkles and he sees any aging and he sees it a lot more than what any any other person would because because of that recall, right? Like it's so they do touch on that too. Yeah, um, and he says and he tells Justin, we're kind of dancing around one of the other things, but he tells Justin at the end, he's like, you know, I, you know, he asks him, he's like, you don't keep up with anyone in the family still. Like I'm the only one you keep up with, and he kind of explains, yeah, it's because. You know, some of us bobs are running into the situation where we're having to watch the people we know not only grow old but die, and we're still going. And mm-hmm. it, he said, it's called uh, fading in, fading into legend. Yeah. And uh, you know, he brings up, he's like, well, you know, at least I'll be remembered. And he tells him to look around because he sees the large family he's had, and he's like, you're not going to be forgotten. So, yeah. Um, one of the, the other things continuing, right? Is his family that's continuing his memory, not Bob's? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and one of the other things, one of the other big things to Will is, um, so we have a situation where Homer becomes corrupted and they repair him, but he, once again, with that perfect memory, he's not able to get those, those memories gone and commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And it deeply troubles Will to the point that, uh, when they find a, uh, when they find out who's behind it. And I love, I completely love this scene. Great scene. Uh, Yes, because uh, Homer literally says, when you find out who did this to me, drop a rock on him. Mm-hmm. And Will took it literally. Yeah. Because we find we find the douchebag that's done all this stuff. He used to be, he was actually one of the programmers for the um, replicant systems. And that's literally it. calls so, him, yeah. yeah, calls him, tells him face to face, you've got five seconds to pray to whatever God you have before I just obliterate you. And just literally causes a... <laughs> You know, almost. Him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, and then all the other bobs are just like, yeah, okay, yeah, we, there, no one's gonna say boo. So, um, yep. But I, I, will to me is, will to me is the old family of the bobs, and that that's one of the things I love about this book is. Each one of the bobs, as he says, is a different. It's it's like each it, a different part of your personality or mm-hmm. your your thought process has had its own time to grow. Yeah. Um. And Will is the old. Will is the old responsible family member. He's the one yep. that keeps everyone together, and he's got a job to do. He didn't ask for the job, but he's there to do the job, and he's going to so, get it done. So he's got to do it, and it might as well be me. Yeah. That's right. So. And then eventually, and I do love the fact that after Homer is gone, they start saying that he doesn't joke very much, but when he does, he knocks it out of the park. And the whole thing about not sure if kidding or whatever, I <laughs> I could just imagine that. So, yep. um, yeah. Um, real quick before, I want to go ahead and mention this before before uh, we go any further. So I was looking at, I was trying to find some information on this, trying to keep everything straight. And I was looking on a couple of different, like, um, Reddit forums and stuff like that, and someone was proposing, what if this was become like a an HBO show or something like that? And um, they mentioned they're like, if if different characters were going to play the different bobs, who would you, you know, if different actors were going to play the different bobs, who would you have them? And I'm just thinking, no, 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 no. It needs All whoever whoever they cast is going to be like, listen, dude, this is going to take a while because you have to do 
all of the bobs and there's gonna be a lot of makeup and (laughs) um 30 different people yeah exactly but i'm like to me that would just seem so like why would you not have the same person do all Well, they make it a point they all look the same so like when i exactly bill or if it's bob when he goes on stage and he looks out he just sees a sea of bobs Bobs. and and then when there is another uh uh person replicant that shows up in the in the uh in the moots dear god it's like who the hell is that like yeah, it's wow yeah, yeah. When, so, when he bring when howard brings bridget bridget yeah, yeah. That, that was awesome which I'm and sure. uh what's his name uh, oh sailor and i can't remember his name oh i can't remember his name either but Australia, yeah yeah the australian or new zealand anyway. it's not arthur no yeah. no no, no. Uh, i can't remember his name i'll have to look it up anyway um all right so let's move on to bill oh. Oh, uh, I was I was gonna say I thought you might be asking of who which actors you may actually think of. I thought of Hugh Laurie, a young Hugh Laurie. Because, a young Hugh Laurie, yeah. I think, would have yeah. done this. Pat Oswalt. Yeah. Pat Oswalt. Hugh Laurie's a little too tall and Mikey. Pat which Oswalt would I... be an interesting. If he has the range. Because yeah, you're right, he, you know what? And see, here's the thing: who, if they do a a series of this, let's say they do a three season, you know, season for each book, um, talk about a hell of a way to put something on your resume. Like, oh, yeah. hey, guess what? I played, you know, 25 different actors or 25 different characters on this thing, and each one of them has their own personality and range and everything else. So, so the other one that I thought of immediately when when I was thinking about this when I was listening to the books was uh, the guy from Split. I can't remember. Oh, me too, James McAvoy. James um, Mac. I did think about him. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's but like. Yeah, he's young. I and I get yeah, but, that, but he's but not. Bob that, was young when and, he died. Yeah, Bob was in his 30s. He was 30s, yeah. Yeah, he was in his 30s when he died, and James McAvoy's older than we are. Yeah, so, and I just, I th- I thought McAvoy, because he proved himself in Split, where he can go from one character to another and not even skip a beat. He's got a good American accent, too. And he does. Like a good North American accent, yeah. yeah. I just think of someone a little more portly. That's all. Oh, see, and oh, I don't, I don't see, I, I see him with a little see... bit of, a, like, a, like, a dad bod. A dad bod, situation yeah. A bit... See, I wasn't even thinking that. I always thought he was just being kind of thin, but. No, yeah. see, I always. Oh, computers. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there are thin nerds out there. I'm just saying. Well, and he does he does mention the athletic, like the lack of athletics as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. Baseball and all that stuff. So yeah, dad bod. I I pictured dad bod. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> um, let's move on to Bill. So uh, okay, so one of the things I want to point out is of uh, the original cohort. Uh, so Bob gets out, and you know, he he fights off Medeiros and immediately creates uh, four other bobs. Mm-hmm. Um, he creates uh, uh, Will, Bill, Milo, and Mario. <laughs> Milo. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's talk about Bill. So Bill is uh, Bill basically decides, well, I'm just going to set up shop and and start tinkering. Mm-hmm. And he a uh, couple of his uh, couple of his big ones that he produced were uh, Garfield, who's his basically his right hand man, mm-hmm. uh, and later on Icarus and Daedalus, which they're only really important at the very end, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, but he's the one that creates the weapons and the technology for the Bobs. Um, I, I like of all of the Bobs. Here's the funny thing: I can see myself in all of the Bobs. I really oh, can, or almost yeah. all of the Bobs. Um, but Will, I'm just like, yes, it would be so awesome to explore the universe. But on the other hand, if you had all the time in the world to just tinker and play and invent, like that would be so fucking cool. Yeah, 3D would... printers who can get down to the atom. Imagine oh, what, my could God, you, yes. what could you do with that, Eugene? All the baby Yodas. <laughs> all the baby Yodas. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm I binge watched The Mandalorian, watched the entire season in one day. <gasps> Sorry, yeah. <It's laughs> nice. Like... <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so like he, but he starts. The, he's the one that holds the moots. He's the one that uh, started the Android technology. He's the one that created the Scut technology. Well, I say that he right. and Garfield. Yeah. Um, and how great a scene is that when Garfield finally calls him out on it? Yes. Right. Yeah. Or, I, dude, I. I feel like I'm not. I don't have a finger in anything. Like I'm just your 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 Eeyore or, or not your Igor. Uh, Igor, yes. Yeah. Where you know it's just yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> so I, I thought it was a great scene where Garfield finally is like, "Listen, man, I, I kind of want some say in stuff too." 
Mm-hmm. Yes. And I love the I love the play between the two of them. Uh like him coming up with the idea about the the or him using the movers and Garfield being like, dude, take take five seconds, yeah. make sure you're <laughs> make sure you're planning this or whatever. Um also one of the other things I love in the book that runs through is like when they're completely and totally shocked by something and they're like, I literally sat there for five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an eternity. It's an eternity them. for a computer. For that, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I it took me five seconds to respond. Yeah. Um I love and oh my god. I, I I cannot help I laugh out loud every time there's this scene where Garfield is in um his flying Rodan thing, the first time he puts it out there and it oh. crashes. <laughs> and he's like, Well, you know what comes next? And he's like, What? And he goes, Rocky too. And he's just like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so a conversation I I can see having with you know with with yeah. a good friend you know working on a project. So, um, I like but Bill's the first time he did that, he had the pain sensors jacked up too. Much. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> Dude, what were you thinking? Yeah, <laughs> feedback was too high. <laughs> yeah, but I love his insistence on the fact that every time someone discovers scut technology, he immediately jumps in <laughs> to to startle them. I love what? that. I would do that every single time. Just to uh-huh. every and, single time. And I love that even later it's mentioned that they, they noticed that even now, after all these years, it's still not in there that this could be done. That's right. He still has no mention of it in it. And it would never get boring. I would, oh, no. That would be the, no, absolutely not. Every single time would be great. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, we, we can, you know, talk live? This is crazy. And then, yeah, just fucking pop up. That's I love it. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's yes. great. Um. Yeah, I, I, like I said, of, of all the Bobs, I, I definitely I have a kindred spirit with with Bill on that. So, um, which leads us to Milo. Uh, <laughs> Milo discovers uh, a twin planet situation, and it he's like, oh my god, both of these are inha- are you know habitable, and yeah, there's gonna be Sorry. some problems and everything KP- else. What is this the KPP? Oh, no. Yeah. No, he discovers but, Vulcan and Romulus. Vulcan and Romulus. That's right. That's right. And, and I love the fact that when he's packaging up the information and sending it back to the Bobs, he's like, "We're going to call them, you know, Vulcan and Romulus." And <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, Guppy goes, "You know, you're you're not allowed to do that. That's not part of our program." He's like, "You know what? They can go jump. This is, I'm naming them." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but we don't get a lot of Milo because uh, he goes once he, you know. Check out checks out that uh, area. He goes to Owl further to check out another uh, possible planet for uh, um, you know colonization and gets jumped by Medeiros. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because later on in the book it, it talks about we the others uh, which are, are mentioned and, and kind of hinted at and I, I don't remember how much it talks about them in the first book. Um, they definitely are our main bad guy, but like they said every so often, Madero shows up and, mm-hmm. you know, just as they said, you know, twirls his evil mustache and, yep. you know, foils the day. So, um, but that's about all we get out of Milo. Uh, he did, you know, had some interesting conversations. So, uh, but speaking of the uh, others, so we get, then we get to Mario. Now Mario started off being very, very introverted. And um, I, I really do want, I want to ask uh, Mr. Taylor about this because his, his personality when he first, Find, when we first you know hear from him or see him in the first book, he's very standoffish. He doesn't really talk. He's very antisocial. Um, but then when he dis- – and, and I don't know. Maybe that was the plan is when he discovers the others, his personality changes. He immediately is like, I have to get back to the Bobs. I have to tell everyone what's going on. And he, he produces the, um, the 50 dwarves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> and he's very – like hungry? cordial with them. He's okay oh. with them. <laughs> hungry and hungry and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dopey and yeah. Um, he, his personality kind of flips after that point. And like I said, I don't know if that was, I don't, you know, I don't know if that was an intentional thing that, you know, th- like they said, all the bobs, when they, um, when they, when the shit hits the fan, they all know what's going on and all kind of buckle down or whatever. So well, I don't know if that was part of it. I don't remember who it was talking to who, but one of them did say, um, I think they were talking to original Bob, or sorry, they were talking about Bob, uh, and it might have even been Riker and Bob, and saying that, you know, you you say that we're all different, but 
mom would you know our mom would recognize that's true any one of us mm-hmm. and and then he did say maybe not milo but <laughs> or no which, <laughs> maybe not mario <laughs> yeah whichever one it was but um but yeah he said he would on a different day they would recognize any one of us I yeah bought, so i will say though as an introvert um once you get i think we can all speak to this because we're all introverts um you, in a new situation you're very like withheld because you're observing and you're trying to figure out what's going on and the comfortable situation and then all of a sudden once you're comfortable your introvert thing clicks on and you're very comfortable and then you become more yourself so that's how i take it is he was trying to figure it out and then once he got comfortable and knew the situation then the and that it totally would, makes sense yeah the introvert and he did say just don't have anything to say i, I have, I have yeah. nothing to add right now yeah and that's you know. and i i do that a lot like if i'm in a new situation i'm just like is it my christy lips? calls me out and she's like you're not you, you didn't really say a lot i'm like i didn't have anything to add i was like, like <laughs> I, you were talking about something I don't know about, so I didn't yeah. have anything to add. I, let's talk about 3D printers, and you can't get me to shut up. So. <laughs> then I won't shut up, and then you'll get annoyed, and then. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's but but I yeah I recognize that trait, so that's that's pretty cool that it. And the that. the other part of it is he saw what threat there was, and he was like, "Shit, mm-hmm. I need to." Right, I I need to buckle down and and. However, I feel it doesn't matter right now. I got to get this yeah. done, and that seems to be throughout all the bobs, right? Mm-hmm. If shit hits the fan, okay, yeah. we got to buckle down and do this. Yeah, I agree. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about was Howard. I like Howard. He's my favorite. <laughs> I I do really like Howard as well. Uh, How, so How, um, Howard's story is my favorite because I have a crush on somebody. Yeah. Oh, How, oh yeah. <laughs> Howard's Howard oversees uh, the humans on Romulus. Yes. So let's talk about let's talk about a um, a very tight relationship he has with Colonel Butterworth, who yeah. I love as a character. Yeah. Um, I, I like Butterworth from the start. I <laughs> did too, and I completely understand how him and Will would have been butting heads. And it even says it. He's like, I don't know if it's because it's me or if it's because Butterworth is not facing the barrel, you know, looking down the barrel of a gun for human extinction. So, um, but yeah, Colonel Butterworth and the idea later on, especially when we start dealing with the others, uh, which like I said, I don't remember how much it talked about the others in the first book, but the others are quite a bit. They they do discuss the others. Near the end. Near the end. Yeah. So the others we, we find out in the books as we get more information are basically a semi insectoid, looking kind of creature yeah, that, that we find out in the third book but yeah. basically what we find out in the second book is that they just consider these uh to be food everything else is yeah. everything is wanna... food and resources mm-hmm. yes they have one ruler they have a um a prime and everything serves the prime and to the point that they are building a starting to build a dyson sphere around their sun so that it will be one continuous living situation that the prime would be over so for somebody who is not what you'd call a scientific nerd i have no idea oh. what a fucking dyson sphere is oh, oh yeah so no, okay. i was just sort of thinking yeah i'm like okay that's <laughs> okay me. real quick real quick before the- who here was introduced to the idea of dyson sphere through star trek the next generation damn yeah, right Hell yeah! <laughs> I watched I watched Star Trek: The Next Generation for a reason. I don't remember it, so okay. I have no idea what it is. It took me a while to figure out what a like I like. So what you a, know what it is now, right? Sort of. Is it like a Death Star? No. Oh. Okay. So Ray, this, you have failed her. <laughs> she didn't tell me this. I would, I just she just she never mentioned it once. This is I the didn't. first time I'm hearing that we she have didn't know what a Dyson in our marriage. Yes. Basically, yes. building you're building a sphere around a sun. A Why? solar panel, a solar panel okay. around the sun. Essentially, is yes. So that at, the idea is that you could encapsulate the sun, and you would be far enough away that you could live. Okay. So I mean, you're talking. You have to imagine the amount, the scale that we're talking yeah. about. Okay. It would be built like building a sphere around the sun as far out as we are from the sun right now. Um, but the idea is you would be able to harness all of the sun's power. So you're like mining the sun. Almost. You no. know, not, well, mining. not mining it, but, no, but you like be... you're like extracting the solar power from it. Yes, you would be the using it. Yeah, 
instead of instead of harnessing just a little bit of the sun, we'd get yeah. all of the sun. I mean, it's a ingenious idea, but my God, I can... <laughs> See, when the science stuff happens, I tend to like glaze over because do I don't understand a do lot. Do you of it. remember the episode of Star Trek where the uh, they take the ship into into this docking bay, and all of a sudden it looks like they're in a blue sky, oh, and they look like they're inside, and they're they're inside of this. But it's giant... but it like locks them in. The yeah. episode was Close. called Relics. If you need to know, <laughs> and it's the one where they found Scotty. Yes, oh. yes, we find Scotty. That's right. I, yeah, I'm, it, I can see it in my head. Anyway, that's the Dyson Sphere. So it's there's an there. atmosphere and everything that they're like it's a huge. Anyway, yeah. it's it's pretty cool. I will show it Not to you later. A Death Star. Okay. <laughs> Not a Death Star. No. no. <laughs> Sorry. But they do have Death Asteroids. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes, they have they have Death Asteroids. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah, that was but the whole like again. I'm not, I don't understand a lot of the science stuff. So when that happens, I tend to glaze over because I focus more on the character stuff that's happening and the, and like Howard. the situations that are moving <laughs> along, not the science stuff. Yeah, so like really, okay. Did you ever read the Larry Niven's Ring World series? I have not either. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good one. It's like a scaled down version of a Dyson Sphere, except oh, okay. it's a ring around the sun. Okay. Cool. So. I didn't okay. even know that was like a thing. Okay, cool. Kind of like a halo. Yes, kind okay. of. Well, bigger, but yes. <laughs> bigger, but yes. Um, all right, so Howard, he has this relationship with Butterworth, and um, he gets the idea that maybe they should clone Butterworth because they're having to fight. Uh, they're having to fight the uh, the others, and the ideas that Butterworth puts forward are fantastic because he is a trained strategist. He's a military man. He knows how to go to war. Mm -hmm. And Bob has no clue. Like he even says, we sucked at, at chess when we were alive. <laughs> so can, can I just say that I love the interactions between Howard and Butterworth as well, because uh, that uh, um, Butterworth's running out of his alcohol that he loves. Oh yeah. <laughs> With his Jameson. Yes. Yeah, Jameson. He's like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to kind of be a little bit better with this. I'm running out, and it's uh, it's no longer being made. Yes. <laughs> well, the the scene in particular when they're they're both looking at the uh, they find the the cupid, the cupid bug. The oh, yeah. you know it's like a really big mosquito or whatever, and it's like really gross. And he's like, I noticed that Butterworth was paying a lot of attention to his Jameson. Yep. <laughs> he's oh, like, I so I start it. drinking as well, and he looks at me, and I'm just like. What of it, dude? <laughs> Yo. I think so. all the Jameson he drank, though, probably gave him the dementia. The end. <sighs> it might have. <laughs> that was a little heartbreaking when he, yeah. especially what? the realization that Butterworth was like, I would have loved to have been, but this is going to affect my brain that cannot be yeah. fixed with replication. Yeah. And yeah. I'm utterly useless and I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, he would have been, he would have been great. Oh, he would have been, oh, he been fan. The, the battle at the end would have been completely different. Oh, they absolutely. probably would have stood toe to toe with yeah. the others, and it would have been at least been an even matchup instead of being a hell mary throw at the very end. So. So, and it also brings up the whole like, even though I mean, you, you can feel very alone. You're like, I can do this by myself, and even if you have 50 million clones, if I had just like three more of me, I could get all this stuff done. It really shows you that mm -hmm. having other one people, other brain. one other brain, just somebody <laughs> else who's different than you can give you a whole new perspective. So yeah. yeah, that it just shows that even if there might be hundreds of you, yeah. just having just that one extra perspective is enough to make a difference. To make a shift. Yeah. yeah. That's why yeah. they had smurf fat. That's why they had smurf fat. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's one of those things, and I, I'd like to ask him. I wonder if it's something that. Well, and, and see, that's the thing. Like they talk about, you know, the, the nice thing about cloning themselves is that whenever the clone comes out, they already know what the plan is. Yes. For whatever the process is. But like, so like whenever they were cloning themselves, they're like, you know, whenever they got their ass handed to them by Medeiros, mm -hmm. they're like, all right, well, I'm going back and use me as the base. So they use them as the base and all the clones come out and they're like, fuck yeah, we're going to go back. Every so often though, there's one that's just like, eh, like Elmer. Yeah. Elmer was kind of like, guys, I don't know about this. But then once the shit hit the fan. Honestly, Elmer was the only one that, that almost survived. Like he was the last man standing and he was, you know, they were all like, you know, even though he was kind of, what did he say? Um, loose in the spine or whatever. He's like, he, he, you know, stuck it out and, and kicks some ass. So, uh, but I, it makes me wonder if, uh, cause later on we get, we get these iterations, we get, um, Loki and Thor 
and mm-hmm. Thor in particular kind of becomes their uh, go-to man for uh, uh, strategy. And it makes me think, could he feasibly keep breeding himself uh, to go in these different directions? You know what I'm saying? Like you have Thor who has this idea and then we do, you know, Thor studies all this strategy and then he clones himself. And then we take the clone that is learned the most or has the most, you know, aggressive tendencies or whatever and keep going down. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder if, mm-hmm. if he's so, explored that idea. I'll tell so you. That a... <laughs> What's that? That's how you get a shih tzu. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I, I think, though, that they've recognized that there's no control over how different each clone yeah. is. They it's all... That. It's like a total crapshoot. Yeah, because Riker created Homer, and I mean, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, so, um, all right. So anyway, going back to Howard, Howard also has some other she, pretty she, significant uh, relationships. Uh, one being Stefan, who is uh, the French, <laughs> the Frenchman who is in charge of security. Yeah, uh, cool. And <laughs> then we have Bridget. He and, she, yes. Um. Uh, <laughs> Bridget is just a, she's a, she's a fireball. Yeah. Literally, she's got flaming red hair. She's a fireball. Mm-hmm. Um, I love how she, she I can because I can picture it now. She comes in, answers his phone, he she and walks away. And yes. now he's just staring at a wall like, yes, what's going on? <laughs> Where'd she go? And and he meant and he even mentions like he's like wow she's got she's got a great laugh I and mean, this can't go anywhere. What are you thinking, Howard? Like yeah. just. Yeah. You know, I know, I know we were human, but this is not going anywhere. Yeah. Um. So anyway, um, he ends up uh, introducing her to Stefan, and uh, in the process, going back to going back to to the Jameson, he uh, starts working with her and starts uh, producing alcohol on uh, on Romulus. Tequila. And, uh, do what? Tequila. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chairs. Um. <laughs> And uh, he ends up going into business with her and um, introduces her to Stefan, to Stefan, and intercepts a uh, a message about something she's got going on health wise. And so she goes, "There's some cancer." They go in under the knife or whatever, and she comes out, and he realizes that her and Stefan are a thing. And I love that he's like, "How did I miss this?" Yeah, like yeah. it's like, "Damn it! How did I?" How yes. did I not see that coming? Yeah. You and that would have that. totally been me. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? You love that part? He's such a dick. Ray. <laughs> well, no. I just, because I, I would see myself doing that too, right? Where it's like, how did I miss that? Like, how did I not see that coming a mile away? Yeah. That I introduced these two humans, and of course, they're going to like each other. Of course, they're going to fall in love with each other, right? Like, it's... And I, I do like later on how Bridget was like, how did, like, I thought that's what you Wanted. did it for. Yeah. I thought that's what, right. you know, and, and uh, you know, her realization that Howard felt the way that she did, he did. And mm-hmm. it was all, it was, it was actually a great story. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a great love story between the two of them. And, um, and then when they get married, he signs everything over to her, yeah. which mm-hmm. I thought was respectable. Yeah. And then as one of the other boss, he's like, well, I'm, I've got to go. I've got to go do something yeah. else. And they're literally, I can't remember who it was. I want to say it was Will, was like, so you're joining the Foreign French Legion, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Woman broke your heart, so you're just going <laughs> to, you're gone. Um, I thought this was a really good use of the time dilation, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He signs over and then takes off, and then she's lived her life. Like but, when they yeah. come back to him, and yeah, I that was a really smart move to speed yeah. things along, like move the story along. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, because um, he doesn't getting to that through, through all of his books. He made time a character too. Yeah, yes, yes. really good use of it. Um, and that's where one of the things I probably I'd like maybe actually read these books, like physically read them rather mm-hmm. than the audio book. Mm-hmm. It might help me with some of the time going on. Because mm-hmm. 
Like that and the acronyms, because a lot of the acronyms I didn't get yeah. listening to it. The first I I time was around. I was trying to spell it out in my head, and I'm like, oh, yeah. now I got to listen to the book. What did I miss? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has a uh three. He has the three books out there on Amazon. They're hard copies and signed. Yeah, I saw that today for 150 bucks. Yeah. And guess who accidentally signed up for a year-long subscription of Amazon Prime? <laughs> this girl! <laughs> hey, you know what? Christy and I signed up for it. We're like, you know what? We'll use it. We'll get free shipping for Christmas. And then, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I've, I have not. It, it's an automatic up. It's like, nope, we use this yeah. all the time. Actually, I've had time. Prime for like the last six years. Yeah, I, it's... I don't give it up. It, it's too valuable to me. No. Yeah, well, once, I'll explain that story afterwards. As to once why you start, that's... once you start buying stuff online, and you just you come to expect, ex- well, like for me now, it's almost everything is two day, and they're actually building another uh, shipping center like an hour away from me. I may actually start getting like if I buy stuff early enough in the morning, I may still start getting it same day. Dude. Are you kidding me? There's no reason for me to ever go anywhere ever again. <laughs> so it's turning into surrogates. <laughs> well, like, I'm just like, you know, people, everyone's like, Google has your information. I'm like, Amazon knows more about me and my family than anyone else. And I'm fine with it because they're like, hey, if you bought this, you'll like this. And I'm like, yes, you're right. I would like this. <laughs> so anyway, back to Howard. Anyway, um, segue. Yeah, so Howard gets the inf- Howard gets information that they've had a son. They named him Howie. They actually had they had two daughters. They had a son named Howie, uh, and then he gets the information that um, Stefan is dying. Mm-hmm. And it's at this point uh, he goes back. He goes to uh, 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 Bill and says, "Hey, um, how, how's the Android process coming?" And they're like, "Well, we've got something that'll kind of work." And he's like, "Well, I've I've got a funeral to go to." So he's the first one to take over an Android. It basically looks like a mannequin. It's not great because this is the first iteration. Um, and he goes down and he even mentions like the. I love the fact that he's like, you know, it's been over a hundred years since I've actually been with anyone in person. I, I, I'm trying everything I can to muster all the energy I can to open this door and walk out of this thing. And I've, I've, I've been here forever. I just can't do it. And he's like, I look at the clock and two seconds has gone by. He's like, well, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an eternity. No, it's been two seconds, idiot. Just open the door. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, anyway, he goes out and he meets Bridget and the kids and unfortunately is not able to say goodbye to Stefan. Um, and it's at this point that this relationship picks back up and she's like, you know, there was always something there and, you know, she's older. So the um, even though they allude to it, the sexual aspect there isn't is important. It's more so just spending time with each other, which he but I still think it's hilarious that he. He mentions the fact he's like, oh, no, that's on you. Like, you just say the word and I will upgrade. (laughs) Um, But I I love their relationship because especially just the way that they interact with each other. Like she Mm -hmm. says, she's like, you know, she has a dirty mind and so does he. And she's like, sometimes I had to bite my words back with Stefan, even though I loved him. And just because he wouldn't get it. And you do. And we fit together like that. Um, They're best friends. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so we run into an issue though, where he is, he says not dating. He said, cause there's no physical aspect to it, which mm-hmm. I disagree. Sorry. Just cause there's not physical aspect doesn't mean you're not dating. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, tr- he's basically just trying to protect himself and, and explain it all away. Cause I'm sure, cause at this point, all of the other Bobs are like, what are you doing, man? She's going to die. She's a yeah. human. You are just setting yourself up yeah. for failure. Yeah. And it's something I honestly at this point it's a shortcoming in the bobs. Uh because later in the book, uh even even after what happens with Bridget, um, you know, they start to realize it. They start to realize that yeah, people are gonna die and that's gonna suck, but it's better to have lived and loved that person than it is to have not had them. Yeah. But it takes them a while to get there. Yep. Um but yeah, so Bridget uh, there's a bunch of, uh, of drama with her oldest daughter. Her oldest daughter is basically like, you know, don't want you being around my mom. And she's like, you know, you have no input on this. Number one, number two, have you ever tried to tell your mom what to do? <laughs> um, 
but then she passes away and un and does not tell him that she wants well, to be replicated. Well, I was going to say, but I love the way that he he brings that up. Right, he goes and explores this gas uh, giant. And then he's all the biology, you know, all the biology in there. Yeah, and, and he biologist. and so he takes you know video of that and then Shows creates it to her. creates the VR system and uh, hey you know this is uh, this is waiting for you to explode. We could do that. Uh, you can do that all the time. And Forever. Forever and ever. Yeah. yeah. And and then that and she even admits later that that's was what got her. Point. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a dirty trick. Damn right, and it worked. <laughs> that's right. That's all that matters. Uh, so after a long, le- lengthy legal battle, um, he ends up managing to get her uh, scanned, and she becomes a replicant as well. And so they're basically together. Yep. Uh, it's at this point that like there's this large war going on. There have been several battles with the others. They've all pretty much lost. Mm-hmm. And so he starts kind of freaking out, and he's like, you know, he's like, I haven't been part of the war effort and I feel like I've got to do something. So he starts coming up with these ideas for a floating city, which is an interesting idea. Like I can, you know, our tech, our level of technology, that's really far out there. On the other hand though, like who says we could go live on a glass giant. There's actually some scientists that have said that we could do a floating city uh, on Venus. I've That's I've heard cool. that. Yeah, Quinn loved that part of the book because he's fascinated by creating floating cities in Venus. Like that's his thing. That he's yeah. if they if they, if they sign, hey, you turn eighteen, you can go to Venus. He'd be like, yes, then I'm yeah. signing. Because it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, mom. Yeah, and yeah, it's like twenty five to thirty degrees up in the upper atmosphere. Mm-hmm. So. It's yeah, it's, so. it's possible. So, um, just don't fall in to oh. Venus. <laughs> yeah, that <would> yeah. Be. <laughs> um, later on in the book, uh, near near the end, uh, not only have they figured out the floating city situation, um, him and Bridget are. I love, I love, 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 love the scene where uh, it's before she passes, and there's the dinner date. And he's explaining everything to people. And I love his explanation of whenever someone asks, well, you know, you and the Bobs could just take over, couldn't you? And he's like, God, why would anyone ever want to rule the world or the universe? That's a, it's a horrible job. And I'm just yep. thinking, yes, once again, something yep. else I completely agree with. Yep. Just get along, you stupid idiot. It's like, yes. It's... So, uh, but later on in the book, um, they end up adopting kids. Now we don't see, we don't get a lot of that. We just know that it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yet it's another, it's another thing where, so in the book they talk about that they have moved, that they are moving on. They're no longer human. They are, uh, uh, homo, uh, homo, no, Siberian. Siberian? Siberian, cyber, cyber, I, yeah. Yeah, cyber uh, yeah. Yes. Anyway, um, and, and it's just kind of another evolution. It's like, well, yeah, we're going to, we can get married and we can raise kids and there's nothing really stopping us at this point. So, yeah. Um, Do you like the AI function where you, in the VR, where you could like. Oh, the endocrine. Ch- no change back to, I'd have the body. I'd have. The oh, pockets. yeah. Oh, like, that's where I'd go. <laughs> that would be nice. I could do. I would be fine with that. You want to look like you're 24 again? Okay. Forever. Forever. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> and, and, um, the, and the that, endocrine disruptor. Yeah. Now that was uh, all that, that would be nice to I was, turn off and off. Yes. Yeah. I was explaining Which, to Ray what Adivan is is what being on Adivan is like, and I used that analogy. I'm like, you know, in the Bobaverse where. You, they have their endocrine disruptors turned down. So it's sort of like more even they, they know it's happening and they feel it, but it's not like this huge emotion. I'm like, that's kind of like what being on Adivan's like. Well, Just, it, you turn down the endocrine a little bit. See, so it's not so up and down. And that's I, uh, Howard actually uses that during the trial. He's yes. like, see, I need to yeah. keep well right now. So Down I was goes. just mildly concerned that they were accusing me of, these, <laughs> of being a monster. Yes. And that's what being on Adivan's like. You're like... <laughs> Oh, oh, that's really okay. Cool, yeah. whatever. You're a little concerned, but not so much, and you don't, you know. Otherwise, you're like a crying ball and you're freaking out. And oh yeah. That. <laughs> uh, there was two more in particular I wanted to cover. Uh, the second to last one is Marcus. Um, I love Marcus. 
Marcus is definitely um, my personality when it comes to um, government. Uh, so Marcus is um, he's planning for floating cities on I cannot remember which planet it is, but the entire planet is covered the in water. Planet, yeah. 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 And yeah. everyone's working on these on these large mats. And the government that is there has basically decided that, well, you're going to live where we tell you to live and you're going to work and do what we tell you to do. And he's like, well, fuck that. Uh, we got away from Earth to get away from those ideas. You know, I'm not going to let it happen. So he starts working with um, uh, uh, some of the people that live there. And I love the I love the other character, uh, Gina and um, uh, uh, Dinu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and I love the way he presents, like, especially the little uh, whenever he uh, there was the, the issue with the, the tapping of phones and stuff. And he yeah, shows up and all the little road things are on him. And he looks at him and goes, you really are a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, his idea of like, no, I don't want to start a war. I do yeah. not want anyone to die. And it's just like we're going to do everything we can to work this out. And it's just like, well, th you pushed it. Sorry. This is. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna they do what we have to do. Okay, I guess I have to. <laughs> exactly. Um, so he starts. He starts this. Uh, this war with the ruling council. I say he starts it. He he helps out with it and becomes a revolutionary essentially. Um, and I love the fact that he's like. And of course, afterwards, <sighs> being a replicant, I'm always awake. I'm always available, and I don't really <laughs> have any biases. So of course, they put me in charge. And he's just like the happiest day is whenever they voted him out, and he's just like, <laughs> "Fuck yes, I'm done." Oh, <laughs> um, I, I also like that he forgot to mention that there is defenses on those floating cities. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> forgot sorry about that. Is, oh my bad. <laughs> but uh, I, but like I said, his personality is how I look at uh, anything that I do where I have to be in charge. <laughs> Yeah. I really try not to take on a leadership role. It's just like if no one else is going to do it, and I know it kind of needs to be fair, then fine, whatever, I'll do it. But I'm only going to do it as long as I have to. I have no I, interest in it otherwise. As you run Epically Geeky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> You seem pretty happy to run it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no, believe me, if I could, if I could dump some of this off on someone else, I would. Good at it, man, we oh, love well. it. Well, you're so good at it. Um, it's the it's it's the whole thing about why I'm on the EGX planning committee. It's like no one else is gonna do it. All right, well, okay, I'll I'll help out. I'll step in. So, um, yeah. Um, which leads us back to: Was there anyone else before we get back to Bob one? Ooh. Oh, well, Icarus I, and Daedalus. Yeah, but we have to wait till the end for that. We them. have to wait for the end for yeah. that. Although I love the that they discussed the time dil dilation again with that. And yes. That's all that stuff. Uh, what were the two were bobs the two that... that? Yeah, that discovered the other ship. Oh, the Blair right. Farm. Their, yes. Their back and forth was really good too. Oh, yes, oh. it was. No, I can't remember their names. Though. I don't remember their names either because there's so many. There are so many yeah. bobs. Yeah, and I I love how they're I love how they discuss you know um, this is their one thing yeah this is their thing yeah, that hey thing. we we can stamp this on our hall and yeah. this is yeah this, this is, is our thing, thing to actually like and then they they get it and now they're in part of the moot and they're, they're like shit what do we do people are, people are <laughs> looking at us <laughs> yeah we're not pawn scum anymore that's yeah. good but yeah. also this but is a lot like shit. work <laughs> <laughs> or when stuff starts going wrong for them too like when they go exploring in the ship and all that they're they don't want to tell anyone about it. Yes. Oh, I yeah. thought you were going to talk you about how they're just. Did. Yes, they they're picking on each other constantly. <laughs> Why are you whispering? I don't know. Cause you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then you know, following the the power conduit and all that stuff. I will say though, I do understand why they did not want to use the power source. I'm like, we don't know what it does. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like. Okay, they totally should have contacted the other Bobs. <laughs> Barring that, though, I think they did a really good job of like, okay, we're just we're gonna start one little piece, and we're gonna have fucking nukes here, and we're just gonna like, <laughs> oh, yeah. we'll blow yeah. it up if, if that's exactly. It's, we're ready. So. Oh, that was the other the fun thing when they were picking up all the humans on the Earth and all that, and they failed to account for adequate 
bathroom facilities. Oh, oh yeah, and that's the, so just gross. them discussing it. It was so funny. I was just laughing so Picture much. Picture a, a bot with a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. You're gonna have to go slower. You're gonna have to go slower. Please shut the hell up, please, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to land this giant ship. Oh, um, who was it that was dealing with the PAV? Because that was a oh, good. Oh, the PAV storyline yeah. was really good. Um, I, who I think it starts with a J. Um, oh, oh I, can't, I think it was oh. J. You're right. Um, but anyway, okay. So anyway, yes, PAV. That was cool. They they so they discover the planet. Uh, and then they see that Jock. Jock. Jock, that's who it is. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, with the with the others, uh, <laughs> they they're they're concerned that the Pav are in the path of the the others. Sure enough, they're right. So they they spent enough time to read children's books to understand the languages and do all that. And they picked what like twenty thousand of 20, them. Twenty thousand people, yeah. Yep. So they picked the twenty thousand. So two towns that were roughly ten thousand each. I like that they did that so mm-hmm. that it's you know. A whole town rather than just random people from a city yeah mm-hmm. and then uh and then you know move them and then they even gave them the decision we can take you back and try and get your planet back to normal or we'll take you to this new planet and uh and you know left it up to them right mm-hmm. it was a it was an interesting i can see the mirror these meerkats right six feet yes. six tell meerkats yeah bunch of timon, bunch of timon, <laughs> bunch of timon's and... running around and they're eating and they're surprised that there's even you know hands left that mm-hmm. we eat and... <laughs> so it, it was cool it was uh it was interesting to um see a different society right where yeah. it's based on eight adults living in the same 16, yeah, 16 yeah six to adults. eight living in the same household and, you know, children are, well, they're, you know, one of ours is, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, it's, it's, it is what it is. And mm-hmm. Could be mine. Could and they're be theirs, like, it's... uh, the same technology level as like industrial, like just at the beginning of industrial Steam revolution. Steam area. Yeah. 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 So I, I thought that was pretty that was neat. Kind of, yeah. I kept picturing meerkats in like Victorian garb. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't even think about it. Cause I don't think he said they wore a lot of clothes, but I like that no. idea even better. That's all I could think of was like when he mentioned the marketplace, <laughs> so they're all wearing like, yeah. you know, like tucks and tails. And, yeah. yeah. That'd be awesome. When they have like the dresses and the, yeah, that's all I could think about. <laughs> and <laughs> then the, the security team are like, don't trust the bobs at all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Sean appreciated the fact that he gave him the Vulcan salute and they gave it back to him at the very oh, end. I love yeah, that. That was awesome. That was amazing. Um, was, but I love the fact so that I... the conversations are like, you know, why are you doing this? Well, we, we, we feel bad or what, why? Be, because yeah. of that. Why? What is wrong with you? Are you a child? Yeah. Like, yeah. He just but loses it for half a second. <laughs> I, I love that they're like, well, like you're not, you don't want payment from us. And then they said, they said this word, and it's basically a creature with brain that's broken. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, let's be honest. If if this were to happen to us, if this hmm. other, if you were to wake up on the spaceship, you went to bed, and the next thing you know, you woke up on the spaceship, and they literally said, this alien race came and destroyed the planet Earth, and you are one of twenty thousand people left. Uh, we want to try to relocate relocate you either back to your place or to a new place or whatever. And you ask, well, what what is it you want from us? And they were like, nothing. We're we're just doing this because we feel bad. Yeah, I, it would, I would be hard like, to trust them. I'd be like, no, yeah. you're shady. What's Are up? you plumping me up to eat me? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> When's the anal probe? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I would. I, I. I. have to say, I would be very. Be I would very be very. Shit. Yes. Yeah. But on the other hand, I can completely see the bo- how the bobs. Are like oh, that. Sure. Yeah. Like sure. You can see both sides. But I want a little yeah. bit. Take me back to the planet because I want to see the proof. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah. So, but yeah, I would completely be the same way the bobs are. I'd be like, I, 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 I couldn't save it. And of course, they were very. They were like, you tried. Yeah. You yeah. couldn't yeah. do anything about it. You at least saved us. So yeah. Don't feel bad. Of course, I would be like fucking heartbroken and pissed off all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So, which the bobs were. Mm-hmm. Um, any other bobs y'all want to mention right offhand? Uh, I'm just trying to think of any other storylines. I can't think of anything right now. There are so many. There's a, there's a bunch, and I'm sure, and we are missing. Oh, we're missing so much. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I also love the fact that Bo- Butterworth never, never liked their naming choices because oh, they're like, yeah. oh yeah, uh, Phineas and Ferb are heading back. 
<laughs> and I'm just like, sure, why not? So uh, that is something I need to ask him about is uh, how how you you explain a lot of the names where you got a name because you you know the character likes this or the other, but some of them are just kind of pulled out. Of, yeah. The field and, yeah. So. Uh, I'm curious if there'll ever be a Rick or Morty. <laughs> well, were there a Bert and Ernie? Or am I there were. Okay. Yeah, there were. Yeah. That's the one that Butterworth got because he, he knew Sesame Street, right? Knew, yeah, exactly. And I did like that too, where they discuss, you know, uh, going to the movie theater and uh, like Howard and Bridget go to the date, and uh, uh, there was <laughs> pirating is a thing. And <laughs> I was just looking over Dennis's uh, blog the other day and. Early on, he tried doing up like a list of all the bobs and like the genealogical tree, and it was so funny because he kept missing them. It was other readers that like, well, what about this one? Oh, damn! <laughs> yes, <laughs> I saw. I watched that. that. I saw that too. That was so funny, <laughs> and he missed a lot. <laughs> yes, he did. Like it, it actually only goes through. There are some names that are on there from the from the end of the third book, but some of them in there, I was looking at like I couldn't find. No, I think I did finally find Marcus, but I was just like, but like if you look, if you click on Marcus's name, there's hardly anything there. And I'm like, Marcus had a big deal at the yeah. very end of the book. So well, it's like George R. R. Martin when he was writing his books. One of the, I guess one of the horses, it was at the start of the book, he had the horse had blue eyes, and then halfway through they were green, and then by the end of it they had one of each. Like he couldn't remember what he had done at the beginning of the book. So by mm -hmm. the end of it, it was completely different. And it was readers pointing it out to him yeah. that he had changed the color of the eyes of the horse the whole way through the story. And he's like, well, oh. okay. Well, the name of the, the name of the, uh, cause we're about to, we're about to start, start talking about Bob here. Mm -hmm. Um, the name of, um, the, uh, um, the bad guy that ends up getting shot with the arrow. What was his name? It was a simple name. He's oh, shot with arrow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, his name actually shows up earlier as well as it sounds like a different hunter, but I was like, this isn't the same guy. Cause this guy was oh, kind of oh, happy or whatever. And, yeah. and later on when the name shows up, he's a total douchebag. Yeah. Dalton. The Deltons, um, right. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Uh, what is his name? Cootsie. That's all yeah. I remember. Is he calls Cootsie. him Cootsie. Cootsie. Um, Cootsie. <laughs> it's not Fred. Yes, it's Fred. It's oh. Fred. Actually. So Fred. the beginning of book two, when he's describing the, um, the uh, 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 the pig hunting the the pigoid uh, hunting trip the Delton that gets uh, he puts his his spear down and it breaks and it he gets his leg injured he's okay he's not severely injured but his name is Fred and I one wonder. of the other ones makes the joke he's like you know maybe you should get more because you're you know good you know what and he just kind of makes a joke or whatever and then later on when the name Fred comes up he's a douchebag and I'm like surely it's not the same Delton but who knows it could be I guess well so. could the other thing that is more likely is that it's um, uh, just, uh, you know, there's multiple people called. True. Right. Fred so, or whatever, so. Common. And it is, he yeah. is at a different site whenever this other Fred shows up. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. um, so let's talk about Bob, original Bob, Bob one. Um, Bob <laughs> one's biggest story. <laughs> I feel yes. like I would be friends with this Bob. Like, in yes. the, yeah. I feel like he's a good guy overall. Oh, yeah. So Bob one goes, he defeats Medeiros, he creates a cohort, and then immediately goes and starts exploring and finds the Deltons and um, befriends Archimedes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, over the course of the book, his he no longer travels. He literally is just on this one planet. And um, which is, I, I think, perfectly fine. Like, he's like, well, this is what I want to do. So... Uh, first, he's trying to help the Deltons with their uh, trying to trying to survive, mm -hmm. and then they find out that they originated from this other place, so they help them uh, move back to Camelot, which is their old hunting grounds, uh, and then find out that he's kind of <laughs> delivered them back into the claws of an even worse enemy called a hippogriff. Yep. Um, and uh, so he's got a buddy Marvin who basically is there. He's got a, he he creates a couple of other bobs. Uh, one of them being Bender, who goes off and we yeah. don't hear we don't hear from again, which is actually kind of where the next story's gonna pick up. Uh, Luke as well, right? Luke and Luke as well, but yeah, yeah. Luke comes back yeah. and yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, there are these hippogriffs. There are these large, scaly 
about the size of a Clydesdale, this large monster that can fly and change color. And, I was just going to say, like, aren't they invisible or something? Like yes, that? and they're invisible. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, he becomes good friends with Archimedes, and Archimedes takes on a wife, Diana, who he doesn't like, and she doesn't like him. Uh, but they have a son named Buster. They have some other children as well, but Buster hangs around and he sees Buster grow up and he sees Archimedes grow old. Um, and Buster grows up and then like, um, Arnold's son. Mm -hmm. I uh, love that. Yeah, I do too. Um, he's like, you know, these are like my three favorite people ever. Um, but so there's this, there's this big, um, there's this, there are several big battles. The people, uh, are like, you know, did you bring us back here to feed us to these creatures or are you just an idiot or whatever? <laughs> and he has a big falling out with the high council and ends up dropping a rock on the planet. And as he said, forgot to carry the two. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I love he, that Marvin even warns him. He's like, like, make sure you get this right. Or this is going to be bad. Exactly. <laughs> and it got bad. Yeah. It got bad. Uh, <laughs> not terrible, except for the fact that they, the Deltons come back and say, we don't want you here anymore. Yeah. So, uh, which yeah, breaks his heart. Yeah. There's a couple things about the Deltons that I do love. They talk about time as in how many hands something is or how many heartbeats, right? I, I thought that was really neat that they, they discuss those things and he, he uses those. Um, the other thing, too, that I, right, you know, before we get too far into the story, I love when uh, Bob and uh, Bill start talking to each other and Bill pops up in the VR and he recognizes like differences in the VR. Oh, and he's yeah. like, oh, I got to merge some of this. Like, this is cool. So mm -hmm. it, it was cool that they, they, even when they split off and did different things, their VRs are even a little bit more different and the code was different. So that was kind of yeah. cool. He even says Bob's still the king of, yeah. of VR simulation. So yeah. um, I do like the scene whenever they're having the uh, meeting with the council and Hoffa makes mention about, well, why don't we leave Archimedes out for him next time? And he, Oh yeah. It's flies awesome, yeah. off the handle and like, just like, just tells them you do not fuck with my family. Ever. And, and then realized he cranked the volume right up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, something Scary. I might've done. Oh, uh, yeah. So anyway, they tell he, the council basically says, we don't want you here anymore. So he, he is secretly keeping up with, with Archimedes, but he has to do it and, you know, he has to be very secretive about it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, once he finds out about the Android technology, like it, like, you know, whenever, <laughs> whenever they're talking about, it, they're like, he's bouncing on his heels. Yeah. He cannot. And then whenever he gets the technology, he, uh, Bill even says he left me in the dust. He's yeah. like, I feel like an idiot. I've been working on this for years and Bob <laughs> has done more in a couple of weeks than I've ever got done. Yeah. Um, and so he creates Robert, a a um, basically an android version of um, uh, of the Deltons oh. that he now inhabits, and basically just kind of stays in that almost all the time, mm -hmm. and becomes but, part of the family. And I, well, I do love again the first meeting between him and uh, and Archimedes. Um, oh, and the smell. The smell. The smell. Oh, the smells, you yes. smell. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad. I just got to stay up wind. <laughs> yeah. But I love whenever he, he they take him back to the house and he's like, all right, here's the test. Let's see what Diana does. And she's just yeah. like, okay, whatever. It's a new one. And then a kid like runs into him and he just kind of looks down and, and he he's just like the belly. <laughs> I don't know, it's family. And they just accept him. And then he's like the happiest he's ever been. Yeah. Um, and as time goes by, we, so it, the book does a really good job of ramping up all of these big stories into a big kind of climax. And the two climaxes that are happening are um, Archimedes is, is uh, uh, kidnapped and he has to go help save him. And I love the scene where he saved him, where he's like, you know, I had to, I did my big, my best Hulk impression. And had I not stepped back for a second, I would have done something that they would have been like, you're not a Dilton. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like I could have ripped someone in half and not even given them a second thought. Well, and I love that he uh, he's always very careful about using enough strength. Like even when Arnold's son hits him on the back, he he kind of moves. Kind of moves for yes. So exactly. that Arnold's uh, I can't remember his name, but anyway, so that he's not threatened by by Robert turning like that. So I love the scene where uh, Fred is is making you know they're they've tracked down because they've they've got Archimedes. They're going off with him and then they catch him and Fred's starting to make this speech and then just like all of a sudden an arrow appears in his chest and they look over at Buster. Buster's just like dibs. 
I'm yep. just like, <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, yeah. Buster a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you, you knew that something was going on because Buster didn't say anything. He just grabbed okay. his arrows and his bow and he started walking. It was like, oh, yep. oh. <laughs> yeah. And he even says he's like, this is probably, this is, someone's going to die. Yep. Buster's not going to back down at this point. Yeah. Um, so he, he ends up growing old and and so uh we'll come back to this. So while all this is going on, the they find they have a big battle to try to save the uh the PAV and they they Fail. knock out a lot of ships, but it doesn't really make a big dent. Yep. And in the meantime, <clears throat> the uh, uh the others have kind of pulled back and they're trying to figure out what the hell's going on and they're like uh, they basically told them, you know, we are coming to harvest your planets. Like yeah. you, you've pissed us off. You are no longer food. You are pest. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so they figure out. Well, maybe they're not coming straight at us. Maybe they're doing. Maybe they're doing a loop around. And sure enough, that's what they are. Um. That, so that was a great thing too. They because they were like, you know, they they keep going after, and then all of a sudden they stopped. So they were going after our cameras, and they they figured out that we were watching them, and then they just stopped. I don't like it. And so that's when they start scanning the other way, and we're like, shit. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, the two bobs find the Bellerophon, which is the the uh, broken other ship, or not completely broken other ship. Figure out, hey, if we can get back to Earth, we can put everyone in the ship and get them the hell out of there. Uh, and of course, this is happening right as the others bring their ginormous armada. Well, I, which I will say, even though their numbers were vastly superior to the bobs, the bobs had quite a few ships. Oh yeah, yeah. and. They they even had a couple of uh, Amy controlled ones as well and right it was and I love some of the ideas that they were using about um, I know they said the problem with relativistic uh, weapons is that um, with scut technology you would you would be able to see them coming and get out of the way uh, but yeah the more I've done some research on the idea of, of and especially like when we get in uh, the last jet or I'm sorry uh, yeah the last Jedi the idea of the ship going light speed into the other ship like uh, you want to talk about a super weapon fucking flinging anything into something else at near light speed is gonna be fucking damaging um so uh, he has this big plan and unfortunately they keep getting pushed back. They're they're getting some good punches in, but they're they keep getting knocked back. They keep getting knocked back, and uh, super, it's, pulse. It's super yeah pulse reveals plans and yeah hidden plans and everything else. And it's literally they make they say they made one mistake at one point, which they were able to start taking advantage of. And it's not until someone had the idea of well, are the the jokers? There was their kind of their secret yeah. weapon. They're like. You know, are they still coming? And they're like, yeah, but they're not going to really have the punch that we thought they were going to have. And then that's when they get the idea. Well, if you fire, you know, if you explode a nuclear weapon at sublight speed, it's going to, it's going to spread you know, out, spread way the fuck out. And so they end up doing it. Now, I'm still on the fence as, so they win. They manage to win. Unfortunately, the others do kill off everyone that was in, uh, in Cuba. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I did like, though, that the Bobs figured out that they were using the um, the perfect numbers, right? Because uh-huh. they, they disassembled the Chinese ship. Oh, yes, and, the, uh, yeah. uh, the, gold, uh, the golden... The golden number, like the golden yeah. ratio. It's the golden ratio, right? Golden ratio, that's it, yeah. And, and they were like, so if they don't know we're going to come from a different angle, then that's, and that's how they kind of start getting their advantage because they realized that, uh, that, yeah, this was being used. So our cat's having a dream right now and she's jumping all over the place. All right. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of cool that they, uh, they, they figured that out and they started using that to their own advantage. So, um, afterwards they're like, we won, we, we managed to win. And mm-hmm. Thor goes, screw this i'm nuking them anyway (laughs) there's part of me that's like man that's a lot of resources out because a lot of the book is about trying to get resources and i'm like that's a hell of a lot of metal and stuff out there that you could use to start building stuff on the other hand i kind of like bob and it's like i really don't want you know we just we we didn't finish off the bad guy like we were supposed to yeah Yeah. so we don't have any chance of them nope ever miraculously regrouping and coming after you again. Nope. Yeah. So, um, 
And so it's at this point we find out the two last things of the book. And um, so we mentioned there were two other bobs that were created by Bill, uh, Daedalus and Icarus. And their job, I honestly did not completely comprehend what was happening the first time I read the book. And the second time I read it, like it really locked in. Um, So while all this is going on, they've had this massive long journey where they have taken two small moons from different solar systems and are ratcheting their speed almost to light speed. And literally, I love the description of how they let go of these, these moons and they basically sink into the middle of the sun that they're starting the Dyson sphere around and how it just goes atomic oh, yeah. over it's... like, yeah. Boom. Which is crazy. <laughs> that idea is so crazy. And I, uh, when I was listening to the book the first time, I hear, you know, you hear what they're dragging behind them. I'm like, oh, oh did they, are they doing this? And then, <laughs> and then he starts describing the moon going through and they're meeting in the middle. I'm like, holy shit, they actually fucking did this. Like they fucking made a star go Nova. That is insane. <laughs> so, well, technically supernova. And how uh, they brought it up with the rest of the bobs too. Oh yes, they, they win at Earth, and yes. then they're like, it's everyone's, all... "Okay, well, what are we gonna do with the the other others?" And oh no, we already took care of them. Yeah. That was about a week ago. We yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're just getting word now because of the time dilation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's been done for a while. <laughs> Um, so we wrap that up. Like I said, we did have some deaths on earth, but they end up taking the rest of humanity back. Um, they, uh, uh, basically put them off the ship and then they're like, all right, we're going to put everybody in cold storage so we can get everyone off. (laughs) Well, and then, sorry, uh, when they bring that super ship into the atmosphere, what a sight that would be. Oh my God. I I cannot, I can't imagine how big that would be. Like that up and sucks the atmosphere in and like holy shit. Yeah. Can you imagine a ship big enough that it would take thirty minutes for air freely flowing into it to actually hit me? That is insane. I can't. My brain cannot fathom the size of that ship. So, no. <laughs> um, and while all this is happening, we go back to Bob, Bob one, and oh. he's seeing his best friend oh, for he's had for what do you say, 70 years, something like that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. die. Um, and it's at that point, uh, he he reveals himself at the very end. He reveals himself to Buster, and Buster's like, you know, are you the ball? By the way, I... <laughs> so Chrissy is in love with this guy. He started these tutorials, and, and he's a, a, a newscaster in Illinois. Anyway, Illinois, I think. It's, his name is Bob. Uh, he seems like a really cool dude, but anytime she says his name, that's immediately what runs through my head is the ball. <laughs> but I love the fact that he's like, he's like, Robert, are you the ball? <laughs> and he's just like, yes, I am. And he, you know, he has this whole thing and he says goodbye to his, his family, essentially. What a, yeah. what a beautiful way for a funeral to happen, by the way, where they all put a white flower down on the person. And so he's just covered covered with all these white flowers and yeah that was yeah yeah um and so and i i love the way that the book ends with bob one going back to earth which at this point is a snowball the entire planet is just a giant snowball and going back to like i think he said like a hundred feet above (laughs) where las vegas used to be because it's all covered in snow and ice and then uh will and bill show up and they're just like Hey man, we oh. heard you were coming. We just wanted to say goodbye before you fly off. But they also discuss where they actually are. Like, yeah, they have um, the android there, but they're oh, well. I'm actually like, yeah. oh yeah, so yeah. Did y'all come? He was like, no, no, no. I'm still, I'm still in. <laughs> yeah. So one of them was actually there. One way. Will yeah. Bill was Bill. Will or was. Or was still, I think Will was close, but I think there was actually no. There was an actual. There was another Bob that had taken over because Will had actually already left as well. Yeah. So anyway, because they were like, yeah, we talked to whoever it was, Harvey or whatever, and yeah. he said you, you were doing this, so we were like, we'll print us up two more. So, yeah. um, final. Well, okay, yeah. Final thoughts, and then I have a couple of, couple of quick questions. Well, okay. So as oops. I'm going to admit, I totally forgot about Bender. 
Yeah, it wasn't until we listened there to was, it this time around there that was, I remembered Bender. Yeah, I was yeah. I was listening in and uh, I was like, was that all the bobs? That must have been all the bobs. Uh, must be because because it was such a great way to end it. I was okay if there was never yes. any more Bobaverse because yeah. it was such. I I really enjoyed the ending. I'm very excited that there's more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I liked I like most of the time I like science fiction because I don't I'm not a science person. Most of it goes right over my head. We listened to uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's book. No, none of it stuck. <laughs> I just couldn't. <laughs> my brain doesn't work that way. But I enjoy. She, she, she stops at one point. She's like, "Do you understand what's going on?" I'm like, Quinn, ben, yeah, yeah. Quinn knew what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so dumb. I'm like, this is anyway, just, sorry. It's Greek. Anyway, so, but for me, I really love science fiction because it's, I just love the creativity that uh, an author has to have to come up with these different scenarios and, and different life forms and planets and the world, the, the, the world building that they have to do. I think I find so much and, and it's sci-fi, no matter where it is or when it is, the, the, the trials and tribulations are still the same, and I like them being put into different universes and different technologies. I try to understand the different technologies. It does not work. Not Dyson spheres. Not Dyson spheres, which are not death stars. And so I really liked this because, yes, it's science fiction, but it offers up so many wonderful debatable questions of what would you do in this situation. And that's what I find wonderful about science fiction is because more often than not they ask those questions than in other books is what would you do in this kind of situation it's completely not related like it's unrealistic now in this time but what would you do could you step up would this happen what would you do if you met an alien what would what would happen what part of your humanity would be brought out so that's why i like science fiction none of the science stuff (laughs) stuff. speaking of neil degrasse though i would really love for a character to be introduced um because his his biggest fear is the the one percent difference in dna between chimps and us Mm -hmm. and and that gives you art and science and all that's just one percent difference in dna and he said what if that goes the other way where we are the chimps and the one percent is the aliens and that's just one percent difference that way. What like they they would they would have brought Stephen Hawking as one of the smartest humans, and and that's what their little toddlers are doing, right? Like that's yes. I love that. I love that. That's the mm-hmm. description of like yeah, our smartest human is uh, is as good as their toddlers, right? So what does that look like? And and that'd be kind of a cool thing to explore. So yeah, Sean. Um... I love I, I love the series. It, it was a great series, but I, what I really enjoyed in Dennis's uh, this book and all of his other books was his main character is isn't someone special. Mm-hmm. It, in all of his books, he takes people like okay, so you're a university student or you're a computer programmer or something like that. He's he's not going for the super soldier or anything like yeah. that. The, the person with this insanely high IQ or anything like that. It's the everyday person. And then he's asking those science fiction questions that Chris was talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. what if, if, what if, well, now he's making it really relatable mm-hmm. because it, you can picture yourself in that position too. Yeah. And that's what I, I really enjoy these stories that he's written. And it's not just the Baba verse. Cause if you, you take a look at the singularity trap as well because it was like the low guy on the ship that all the stuff happened to mm-hmm. um and outland there wasn't really anything special about those characters no. but it was just, just the situation just, yeah. yeah. just the one dude kevin <laughs> yeah, Ke- okay. kevin's well, on another level <laughs> yeah. for that particular story you needed a catalyst yeah. so there yes. you go yeah <laughs> but um no, Bobaverse, I could listen to it over and over and over and over again and uh, yeah. enjoy it every time. Except and you would I find have. something new. Homer's death. Time. Yeah, and you oh, would find yes. things you'd forgotten before, missed or whatever each time because it's yeah. so yeah. full and rich. Yeah. But um, I, def- I think I want to read these books mm-hmm. at some point too just yeah. to get 
different. I'm still going to have Ray Porter's voice going through my head as I read yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That's a gimme. But, well, uh, but, and I love that Ray was able to give uh, each version of Bob their yes. own voice as well. Like when, for the most part, right? Like he had to use some of the voice over and over again. Yeah. But when, what, actually, I really liked his voice for the others. Yes. Communicating. Yes. Because it, and I know there's going to be some audio adjustments for that, but it didn't sound like him at all. No. He, they really sounded like others. Yes. <laughs> so. And they, the way that they used the words that they had, right? Because it was translated from Mandalorian. Mandarin. Yes. Mandarin. Mandarin, sorry. Yeah. Mandarin. Mandalorian. It's a translation from Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Mandalorian is in Bobaverse confirmed. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Um, it's the way. <laughs> everything y'all said, I echo a hundred percent. I love the series. I've listened to it. I don't know how many times. It's a, it's it's a series I can just put on in the background to do other stuff and like I don't have to think about it. I can just keep enjoying the story and stop and be like, oh, I, I love this part. All right, mm-hmm. and I can yeah. go back and just <laughs> I just but I love it. I I identify with. Uh, I identify with the characters. That's one of the biggest things about it. And um, yeah, I, I love the story. And um, I, you know, Outland, same thing. I love the story of that one. So uh, I love his writing. And Ray Porter is the perfect person to have voiced this because, like you said, even if the voices are very similar, the writing is such a way that you know the personality. You yep. know, and the the inflection that he gives the voice. Even if it's just a little bit, you know, oh, that's that's Will talking, that's yeah. that's Bill talking, or that's Bob talking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, and I, yeah, I adore this series. Um, so if you knew the replication was going to work out that way, would you do it? Oh, uh, without a doubt. Yep. I, yeah, I'm the same yeah. way. Um, the idea of. <sighs> losing the people like I, it would definitely have to be a thing where i'd have to wake up a good ways after everything that was happening now because the thought of like my boys and my wife and oh, yeah. y'all if you know that unless we're all replicated but you know um that would be heart-wrenching but it's one of those things it's like yes the i the chance to keep um pursuing my interest indefinitely is a fucking awesome idea like um so yeah, I would I would definitely say that his his version of becoming a replicant and living forever is is definitely kind of an appealing idea. Um, uh, something that uh, kind of hits me with the the whole thing, and every, the more I read it, the you know the more I reread it, the more it kind of hits me. Uh, I have a I have an old cat, and his name's Conan, and he's seventeen years old, and we may get another 12 years out of him. We may get in only another six months. Who knows? Um, and it's, I read something the other day, a couple months ago on Facebook that someone was like, what if animals are like the relationship between animals and humans is like the relationship between humans and elves. Like, Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. We, we read this too. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, that is the perfect way to do it because, you know, I had him as a kitten and I've seen him as an adult and now I'm seeing him as an old man. And after he's gone, I'm probably still going to be here and it's, it's going to break my heart, but I would not give up having him or knowing him for anything. And, you know, seeing that put really well in these books is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And I love, I love seeing it put so eloquently. So anything else anyone want to add? Somebody else would have to design my VR. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You would have to read up on coding hard. Yeah. I I a sad state of affairs if I had to do it. I agree. Rack off, rack off, rack off, rack off. That would be be a good sailor because I wouldn't know how to do it. Yeah, I wouldn't know how to cope. Yes, very true. I had somebody to set that up for me and then sort of try to teach me the basics, then it'd be okay. But I couldn't set it up myself. I didn't screw it. All right, let's go and move into our... uh, 
Well, let's see here. So our next uh, episode is actually we're recording within the week or within a week where, like we talked about before, we are actually going to be interviewing uh, Dennis C. Taylor, Ooh. and we'll be putting that out there uh, hopefully about a week after this one drops. Um, we are going to do a book for next month. Uh, this came together very quickly. It's yeah. a very short book. Uh, Jennifer. <laughs> what? Sean picked it. Yeah, Sean picked it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Jennifer that's... suggested we read a book called uh, How to Make Anyone Fall in Love with You. Um, I'm already about three quarters of the way through it. It's an interest. It's going to be a fun discussion. I'll just leave <laughs> that. Is so. he saying your name, Martin, a lot, Martin? That's exactly what it was like. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's kind of weird. So, um, so let's go ahead and move on to. Uh, has anyone been reading anything else? Uh, we kind of mentioned this at the, at the top of the show. The only thing that I've been reading is uh, I put my Audible subscription on hold for a couple of months just because Christmas and everything else. Uh, the only thing I've been reading has been board game manuals and uh, trying to get some of those new rules pounded into my brain. But other than that, I, I've just been like I went back and I've just finished re-listening to all of the um, um, the uh, Magic 2.0 books and I re-listened yeah. to a couple of other things. And yeah, I, I haven't been doing anything new. No, I've been doing a lot of rereading or re-listing. Um, I've got a couple of books that I'd like to get into, but just uh, no time right now. Uh, just trying to, uh, there's been work, there's been sick, there's been video games, there's been <laughs> lots of other stuff. So Lots of other stuff. Yeah. I have been reading so i found it it's called the skin map it's by stephen r lawhead so it's a story about ley lines and people who can find them and travel to other dimensions and other worlds and uh this skin map that sort of is this it's universal the way of, map the way uh, to find these ley lines yeah. and where they go and how to use them and so finding that so it's it's the Very first of a series it's interesting you only read half it and i was about down. halfway through yeah. so i'm almost done now so that's interesting I've been reading that uh, and then on Audible, I've been listening to Harry Potter. I'm on my third go around, and I'm on nice. Order of the Phoenix right now. I think I'm on like chapter 12, 13 yeah. or 14 or whatever. I just think it's soothing. I love Jim Dale's voice, so for me, it, that's my third go around. And then, um, oh, and then yeah. after after being in England, she's repicturing everything. So that's much nice. better. That's awesome because that's what it was. That's. <laughs> and you're like this is i'm just in harry potter now yeah. um and yeah so then when i'm done the skin map i'm gonna read the cursed child because i got in the habit again of reading before bed which helps me sleep good deal the, the yeah. cursed child is a quick read too yeah so what about you oh, sean another, you've been reading oh oh sorry i got another book it's a writing book it's called 300 writing prompts yes so i've been slowly so i just started doing it so i've done like four or five pages of writing prompts. So it's kind of fun, actually. It's a really neat exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, have you been reading anything else? Um, I, uh, over the holidays, I was working in the carriage here, so I was listening to uh, The Good Mythical Morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're funny. So yes. I, I fell asleep I, that to that. Was, yeah, you, you fell asleep to that in the truck. But uh, <laughs> no, I... I'm, I loved it. It was it was great. So I just finished that up and uh, do I they started... narrate it? Do Rhett and Link narrate it? Yes. Oh. oh yeah. And they've even changed the book a little bit to count that you're listening to it. Oh, that's cool. Rather than reading it. So oh, nice. no, it it was great. And I just started listening to the others by uh, Jeremy Robinson. It's basically an alien invasion kind of story. So. I just mindless for going in and to work and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, but uh, no, that's that's about it for now. I've I've got a bunch of Audible credits that I should probably look at. I might have to put mine on hold too. My library is getting pretty big, and I haven't had time to listen to too much. But, uh, yeah, I'm mine just went back off again. And I've got two credits, and I was trying to figure out. I was like. This book that we're going to start is only like $6. I was like, all right, I'm going to do that. I'm almost done. With it. I'm like, maybe I'll just go ahead and start on that Star Wars trilogy we were talking about. I can go ahead yeah. and wade into some of that and tell us whether or not it would be a, a good idea for the show or not. So, <clears throat> Aftermath, right? 
Yes, Aftermath. There's three books in that one, so. Yeah, I'm going to get those. All right. Well, that is our show for the week, ladies and gentlemen. If you would, please give us a uh, five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Music or anywhere else that you can get the show. Um, We are switching to a kind of a monthly schedule for this stuff. We're just sliding into that schedule, even though you're going to be getting two episodes of this show this month. But, but yes, uh, most of our shows are going monthly. We are going to be starting a new show about creatively – well, creating things – uh, and, and the process behind that. So, uh, I'll make sure, we'll make sure to announce that whenever we have more information on it. So as always, you can find all that information at epicallygeeky.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Epically Geeky. Uh, where can we find you online? Anyone? <laughs> uh, the Reluctant Yeti on yes. Instagram, Twitter sometimes, uh, mostly Instagram though. Um, and the Etsy store, uh, you can find it there too. There's a link, uh, to Apple Geek Geeky. So I've got a huge painting that, uh, it's massive. It needs to leave the house. Please it, it. It's <laughs> four feet by four feet. And when it's, well, done, that is big that house is too small for this painting. Oh, and when it's done, I'll, I'll make sure pictures are up and, yes. uh, and we'll get it on Instagram. We'll go from there or mm-hmm. Instagram as well as, uh, Etsy and we'll go from there. So nice. <laughs> Chris, can we find you online anywhere? Yes, you Soon. can. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me here, Marjorie Geeky, Epically Geeky, Sustainably Geeky. And we just did a show last night, so that'll be out soon. It was really interesting about circular economy. Um, and then on our new show, when that gets going. Yep. And then I decided to come back to Instagram and I have an account. <laughs> Which... And then two posts later. They deactivated it because they think I'm a bot. So I'm going through the appeal process. I wrote down the code on a clean sheet of paper, showed both my hands, my whole face. So apparently it can take anywhere from three hours to four weeks to reactivate your account. So I'm not holding my breath. It's already been like five days. Some, I think some of y'all said just create a new one. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't have the energy. No. This is enough for me to uh, – yeah, I don't want to do it again. Uh, so when that's back up, I will – yeah, there's no point in time right now because it's Yak and you can't find it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I am back. I'm coming back. <laughs> cool. Sean, can we find you anywhere? I uh, usually post some face re- face yeah, blah, blah, fake recipes on cooking.com. And uh, it. yeah. Here. Mud pie. I did like your mud pie. That was nice. Yeah, yeah. It's secrets, uh, twigs and berries. Um, yeah, <clears throat> you can find me here, epically geeky. That creatively geeky, possibly. Probably. Yes. I'm up for it. We'll see. Good I day. got a paragraph done, so now I'm kind of like, now I'm done. I don't have to write for five more years, typically. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, you can find my individual wacky adventure at Optimus Gene on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night. <laughs>